Welcome back to Home Studio to our 13th video in our series of working with MySQL and Flask in Python Anywhere and basically putting a front end on our database and now adding to our front end. We're going to be adding to our database in this video and we started the code in the last video and we created the form. Now what we're going to do is work with the Python Flask code to actually make it work. So this is a little more detailed but we'll work through it. So what we're going to do is go back to our main.py. This is where we left off. And keep in mind there's a lot of different ways to do this and there might even be more recommended ways to do it but for now I'm gonna get it to work that's my goal right here is to get it to work and what we're gonna do is we're just gonna keep this try except as it is and create a new function right after it so I'm gonna go right after this try except area and we'll leave it as is and I'll go back out to the margin and I'll just define a function and I'll call it add underscore character because that's what we're gonna do so we'll make it make sense to us. And in parentheses, we're going to put five arguments. And they're going to be our F name, L name, species, color, age. Let me just check this out, make sure I have it OK. And that's what we're going to put in there. Because basically, when we run this function, it's going to want to plug these in. So that's kind of the way we're starting with this function that's going to add character. And we'll put our colon here. I'll hit return. And what we're going to do next is make a variable that represents our query. So we don't have to put everything inside the function. So we're going to make a variable for our query that we're going to create. So we're going to just call it query. You can call it something else, but I'm going to call it query because that's what it is. And if you're not sure what the query should say, I'm going to put quotes here, double quotes. You could go to W3Schools and just go to the SQL is fine and we're going to look for the insert into insert into and they have some code right here here's an example here I guess I'll copy this one now keep in mind in Python anywhere it doesn't put the line break in so we're going to take this line break out it looks nicer like that but when we put in the line break it doesn't work so I'm just going to copy this and I'll go back and I'll put it inside here hopefully I don't have quotes in there and I do not so that's okay so we're not going to insert into customers we're going to insert into characters so I'll copy this from here and just paste it right over so I'm not making any mistakes and then I'll just copy these F name color age those five those are our column names we're gonna put them in here and I'll paste them in there and again, just so you see the way this works, you insert into the table name, and then you put the column names, and then you put in the values that match up with them. They may be strings, they may be numbers. In our case, they're going to be strings, and that's important because we're going to put variables that represent these. Because we're not going to put anything in yet, we're going to wait until the form gets filled out. So when we go back here, we're not going to use these names, we're actually going to use variables. So I'm going to use variables for SQL that's basically a percent sign and an S and that means a string so I'm gonna do this five times so I'm gonna put a comma and then copy this so I don't mess it up and space paste space paste space paste and there should be five and you can see here this is black so if I backspace it it'll stay green so I want it like that so that's the way it should look so that's my query variable that's the string that's going to be used to basically insert characters into our table or insert a new character as we need one. And to execute this query, we're going to make another variable called values. And the values are going to be the ones that are going to go into here. We're going to create a variable called values. Now I know we have these values here, but this is a different variable. So we'll put values. And what we're going to do is just copy this. And we're going to copy it like that. And you might be saying, well, why are you putting the parentheses? Because it's one variable, but it has multiple items in it. So that's what a tuple really is. It's kind of like a list. So this is one variable, but it has multiple variables in it. So it's a tuple. So that's why it has parentheses around. So don't forget that. And then we're also going to do the my cursor execute part. And I could just copy it from here. I'll copy this part up here, my cursor execute. And I'll put it after here and we're not going to execute this we're actually going to execute using two arguments and what are they query and values so we're going to put in the query because that's what it's going to execute that's the query that needs to be used 
and then I'll put a comma, and then we're going to put in the values. So we're putting two arguments for my cursor execute, where up here we just put in the query. Here we're putting a variable of the query, and then a variable that represents the values, that. So we're putting in two separate things, where here we're just putting in a string. So that's going to execute the query, and it's going to plug in our values. Now we're not done yet. At the end of this, we're going to put something called con.commit. And because we can do this multiple times, we're going to make sure that it kind of stops every time and kind of resets. So commit's kind of kind of commit that. So it's kind of done so we can do another one. So that's why we're doing that. And we didn't do that up here because we were just displaying our data on a page. So that's going to kind of commit that so we can go and do another one and work on the form again And if you want to add multiple characters to your database. So that's going to stop it one time at the end of that function. So that's the end of that function. So what we have to do is we have to call that function. And we're going to call that function down here when we actually create our index page because we're putting it on the same page. So we're going to go down here and inside this def index we're going to create something before all this return stuff. The return stuff is going to be at the end. We're going to go down here and we're going to put if and we're going to use something called a request dot method. It's a method method but it's going to request something from our form. This is part of Flask that can actually get information from our form. So this is a Flask thing that we're doing and I mention that because we're going to have to import it up here but let's do it first. Let's put if request dot method equals equals and our method is going to be post and I'll talk about that. I'll just put single quotes here and inside here I'll put post and then I'll put a colon and then I'll hit enter and what we'll do here is this is where we're going to put all our form stuff. We're going to create variables that represent requesting information from that form. So we'll do one and then the other ones are easy. So we'll do fname equals or set to and then we'll do request.form and in brackets square brackets we're gonna put in quotes because these are strings F name so we're getting that information from the form this is from our index page where we have that information set up so that's from our index page so let's just copy this and paste it two three four five and I'll make sure I hit return here and return and return sorry about working here on the bottom and we have five and then we're gonna change these so this will be L name and this will be L name. And if you want to copy these from somewhere else, I'll put species. I'll copy species and I'll put species here. And I'll put species right in here. And then I'll copy color. And I'll put color here. And I'll put color here. And then I'll copy age. Copy it. Paste it. Paste it. So this will pull the information from the form and then that's the information that we're basically going to output when we run the function. So now what we have to do is we have to run the function or call the function I should say. So at the end here if it's a post we're going to run the function or call the function add character. So we're going to actually just we could copy this because this is basically the same thing that we're going to put here. We're going to call that function add character, and we're going to put in the same names. Now, these are argument names here, but these are the actual names that are going to go in there because we're getting them from these variables. So these variables are holding them as the information we get from there, and that's going to output the correct names in there. So if you put, you know, Freddy Fish or whatever you put in there, that's what's going to be in there. So that's going to be calling the function. And then the last thing we'll do here is I'm going to go up here and I'm going to cut this because I don't want this running here. We don't need it to run here. These two lines, 18 and 19, my cursor dot execute results equal my cursor fetch all. What I'm going to do, because we do want it to output again, I'm going to actually cut these and I'll leave the my cursor there because it's, it's a variable that's being defined. And I'm going to go down here and after this add character, I'll hit enter and I'll paste it. And I'll move these over so they're not under the if. So either way, whatever happens, it'll still generate it. So they're going to move over there. So we're going to have three things at the end here. Now, I apologize for this here. It's kind of getting cut off down here. We have three lines at the end that are outside the if that are just part of the regular function. We're going to execute showing everything. And then we're going to also get the results from that, from the fetch all, which gets all the rows. And that's where the results go here. The message goes here. We're getting the message from way up here. That's okay. 
we have, oh, here's message. So we have message here, and we also have message connected somewhere right here. So we, have, we can put in message there as well. So that's still getting sent from the last time. And the other thing we'll have to do here is with this app root, we have to put in one more thing here. Well, two more things we have to do. We're going to put a comma, and we're going to put methods. Now, we're putting both here just in case it does both, so that if it does post, it's taking it from the form. If not, it's just sending the regular get, which is basically just displaying the page. So I'm going to put methods equal. And I screwed this up one time, so make sure you put them both in brackets. So just put square brackets opening closing and then in there you're gonna put get and post in single quotes so I'm gonna put a quote and put get close it up then put a comma and then put a quote and put post and finish off the quote and double check everything make sure you have all your commas in here make sure you have a comma here there's no square brackets around this one time I put a square bracket around here and it didn't work square brackets are only around these the form fields down here that we're gonna be getting information from Maybe I need to put a return here. Maybe I should just do that. Oh, look at that. How <laughs> I should have did that sooner. Just put some returns there at the end so we could see it a little bit better. So anyway, we have that. That looks okay. And the only other thing we need, let's save this. And we're getting a bunch of signed but never used. That's okay. We had that the first time, but we're getting request, uh, undefined request. And that's because we have to import it. So you just have to go up here after render template this is a flask thing and we're gonna not a Python thing it's a flask so we're gonna put request so that'll allow us to use that object the request object which allows us to use uh, the method method so that allows flask to get information from a form so that's something else that we have to do there we're using render template we're also using request and I think that's it I think that's all we need to do and let's save it see if these go away and we still have that one, that's okay. So we have this saved, everything looks okay. Now we'll try it out and see what happens. And this is what our database looked like last time. Now I'm gonna go to my web app. Because we just changed our PY file, I'm gonna reload it. And I'm gonna come here and I'm gonna do a shift refresh because I seem to have issues with that. And then we're gonna try it out. And I'm gonna put in somebody called Freddy Flounder. And I'll just, I'll put a small F fish even though I think when I tried it last time I used a capital F. And for color, there's brown. And for age, I'm gonna do 24. It sounds good for Freddy Flounder. Uh, it, let me know if flounders are not brown, but I assume it's a fish. It's probably greenish brown, something like that. All right, so let's try it out. Let's see if this works. We should have a white row here with Freddy Flounder if this works, if everything on here is done correctly. What are the chances of that? I don't know, let's see. Let's see if it works. Let's add character. And so let's check we get it out. an internal server error. Let's make sure we have our insert into characters, F name, F name, species, color, age, values. We have commas in there, percent %s. They look okay. We have five of them, one, two, three, four, five. Oh, look at that. I have a comma after. Could that be the problem? I have a comma after that. I had another problem with that before. I missed a comma in there, and that was the problem. So let's just save this, and let's reload it again. And I'm just going to backspace here, and I'm going to do Shift and Refresh. And let's put in the same thing. I'll put in Freddy, Flounder, lowercase fish, brown, 24. And let's see if it works this time. And there it is, Freddy Flounder. And let's see if we get a blue one. Let's do, um, did we have a Sharky? I thought I did one with a Sharky. Let's throw Sean Sharky. Not very creative. He's a shark. He's gray. And he's he's 24 too. So we'll put in Sean Sharky. They're friends. Freddy Flounder and, and Sean Sharky are friends. So let's see if we get number 11 here and add that in. And that works. So this is working. It's not perfect. I can't explain everything to you because I'm not an expert at this, but I got it to work. So I'm, I'm happy with that. I'm happy I got it to work. 
And that's all we need to do here. If you have any questions, let me know. I'll find out more if I can. There's also a way that if you ever want to delete someone from your database, you can do that. And then you can also change the increment number. So if you need it to start off again, it won't go back and repeat numbers. But that works. And we put two different records into our database from our front end. So I'm happy with that. It wasn't perfect, had a little error in there, but we figured it out. So here's the code. If you want to look at it again, remember you got to put in the request we used to try and accept. And we took out the mycursor.execute and the results part from being up here. Now, could we have left them in there? Possibly. Try and putting them in and seeing if it works. It doesn't matter right now at this point uh, whether it works or not. Either it will or won't. So you could try that out if you want. But that's at least a exercise with 13 videos that got us to use Flask, Python, MySQL, and we're working in Python anywhere. And we made a database and we're not only displaying it on the front end, but we're adding to it on the front end. And you could build onto it further. You could create something that deletes a character, that writes code, that you can delete something from a database if you need to, and all kinds of things to do with it. But again, the idea here is simplicity and getting some things to work and learning with Flask a little bit. So we're trying to do something relevant. Hope you enjoyed this series of working with Flask, MySQL, Python, in Python Anywhere, which I like. See you soon, and thanks for watching Home Studio. Thank you.